guys, what's up? In this video, we'll be diving into some dog training basics, specifically how to teach your dog to do a nose target, also known as touch. The nose target is a great foundational skill to teach your dog and has so many different applications for your training journey with them. Erica Pasha here with The Kind Canine, where we help you to strengthen and energize the relationship with your dog. If you've been enjoying the videos we've been making, make sure you're giving them a thumbs up to let us know. Ready to figure out how you can teach your dog the simple and valuable skill of nose targeting? Let's get to it. When we talk about a nose target, we are specifically referring to the behavior of your dog touching something, in this case, your hand, with their nose. It's a simple behavior that's very easy to teach, which makes it a great addition to your training arsenal. I particularly enjoy teaching this cue to dogs who are relatively unfamiliar with reward-based training or clicker training, since it teaches them the overall dialogue of how it all works, and it can help to build their confidence in the training process. It's also a great tool for dog guardians to learn how to train a simple skill, lowering the stakes and allowing you to polish and practice your training mechanics. Your practice matters too. When my partner and I first brought Nia home, we were overwhelmed with things to teach her. She had no prior training experience and she had a myriad of behavior concerns. So where on earth were we supposed to start? We first got her familiar with her marker word, yes, or a click from a clicker to indicate to her a precise moment in time that led to reinforcement being delivered. In many cases, a yummy treat. Once we had this skill under our belt, we were able to teach her many foundational skills, such as sit, down, and stay. We had the ball rolling. We had a friend come over a few weeks after we had brought her home, and this friend actually happened to have a dog strikingly similar to Nia. She introduced us to the touch cue to build some structure and predictability into introductions with new people, and it worked like a charm. Nia picked up on it super fast and was able to interact with her and her partner appropriately when given the cue to touch their hand, rather than going full bore at them to get out of her space. Nia was very afraid of people in the beginning, and being able to go up and touch their hand on cue, retreat, and get a reward from mom gave her the predictability she needed to get acclimated to someone being in the home. Of course, there were more steps than this in getting her comfortable with other people, but this was an important facet of her learning how to interact with guests in a more appropriate way. I'm not suggesting you do this exercise in isolation. If you have a fearful dog, working with a qualified force-free professional in your area can help you build a full training plan for your pup who struggles with strangers. A fluent nose target can be used for so many things, in addition to building predictability and greetings with other people. One of my favorite ways to utilize it is in recall work, giving the dog a physical target to come back to rather than waiting blindly for them to return to you, hoping that they don't run past you or get distracted halfway. In my experience, I have found that dogs do much better with a target for them to return to. It holds their focus much more reliably. In these cases, I often teach a recall word like come to mean come all the way to me and touch my hand. Sometimes I will even just use the touch cue if the dog has learned in the past that come doesn't always result in great things. You know how when you're at the dog park, your dog might not want to come back to you right away when you say come? Well, it's likely that they've learned that come is often followed by an end to the fun. Like when you put them on leash, rather than it being something they really want to do. Teaching a brand new cue like touch can help a dog to build a reliable recall from the ground up even if their previous recall word was accidentally poisoned. All right, let's learn how to teach our dogs how to do a nose target. Prepare yourself for your training session. Have your treat pouch ready for easy and quick access to food. I always tell my clients to make sure that they're not holding the food in their hand in training sessions unless we are using that food in our hand to try to lure the dog into a specific behavior or position. For this exercise, we want the food to appear after our marker word following the dog's correct response. For this reason, food should be in a treat pouch or an easily accessible pocket. I like to warm up with my dog and see how they're feeling about training that day by asking for a few simple cues that they already know. This also gives me the ability to practice my own timing with my marker word before I introduce a new concept. For example, when I ask my dog to sit, a skill they already know, I mark with a yes the moment their butt hits the ground, then reward with food. Other examples of simple behaviors your dog may already know are sit, down, stay, 
or even a few fun and simple tricks. Remember to mark the exact moment of success. To get your dog started with a nose target, present your hand just a bit in front of you. I like to present mine with a closed fist since most dogs will come investigate with their nose and that can be an initial kickstart for this behavior. When you feel your dog touch their cold nose to your hand, mark with a yes to indicate that your dog did the thing that you were looking for and follow with a food reward. Do a few reps of this to get your dog familiar with the concept of touching your hand. You'll notice that in the beginning, I do not use a verbal cue. All I'm doing is reinforcing the behavior of touching my hand with their nose. When the behavior becomes predictable, meaning it's happening every time I present my hand for the last several repetitions, then I can start to add a verbal cue like touch. touch. As yes. the dog is approaching my hand, in effect, I will present my hand, the dog will move forward, I will say touch, before they touch my hand and mark with a yes. yes when they make contact. Then I follow with a yummy treat. But what if your dog isn't touching your hand and is just staring at it? One of the first things I recommend is moving around or backing up when you present your hand. Moving away from your dog, especially with some enthusiasm, tends to prompt them to come into your space playfully. This may be helpful in getting the initial behavior started, then building from there once the dog understands what is being asked of them. You may also try baiting your hand with some food so they are more likely to investigate with their nose. I would only do this for a few repetitions though before removing the food from my hand. Using a food lure like this can be helpful in getting behavior started, but I like to fade the lure quickly if I go this route, usually within 5 to 10 repetitions. Once the dog has gotten the hang of it and is enthusiastically touching your hand when you give them the verbal cue, touch, you can start to add some pizzazz. Move around in different ways, request touch at different heights or levels, make it a fun game for your dog. This helps to strengthen the behavior under a wide variety of circumstances and can help to build confidence in the training process. I like to see if my dog will do touch through the middle of my leg for example. A quick tip, this can be a fun introduction to teaching your dog to weave through your legs while you walk. Once your dog is offering touch in a wide variety of circumstances in the home, it's time to take your skills on the road. Working in different environments helps to generalize behaviors. I encourage my clients to practice in places like their front yard, backyard, garden area, and sometimes even different rooms of the home too. You can start to increase distance with your touches, tossing food in the grass for your dog to find, moving away 10 to 20 feet, then asking for touch once you have some space. If you're practicing this skill outside of your home, I would highly recommend a long leash for safety. Touch can be a valuable skill in your training arsenal. It's a simple behavior that is an effective solution for many common behavior struggles, such as appropriate greetings with people or recall, as we discussed earlier in the video. It's one of my go-tos for skills to teach new clients right out of the gate. If you've taught touch to your dog for some specific purposes and have found it to be helpful, share your story in the comments below. So there you have it. We've covered the basics when it comes to teaching your dog to touch or target your hand. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed what you just watched, don't forget to give us a like and hit subscribe so you never miss out on our latest training content. Our goal here is simple, to help you build a stronger and more energized bond with your furry friend and to show you how fulfilling it can be to work together with your pup. We're so glad you've decided to join us as we spread the joy and excitement of working with your dog without force or intimidation. Bye for now.